Yo, welcome to the BST4 channel. Wingnuts, what's going on? What's happening, man? Thank you guys for supporting and watching the other videos, man. I really do appreciate it, man. It means a lot. But anyway, man, let's go ahead and just jump right into it. Man. We're going to talk about Pro Charger, Turbo Charger, Supercharger. You guys already know what it is. Prices and the difficulty, the estimated cost, and what needs to be done, and the horsepower that you're going to get in the end result after spending all that money. Number one, what do you want to see underneath the hood? Pro Charger? You want a supercharger or you want a turbocharger? What does your money look like? We got, it's, everything revolves around money, man. If you want to get a girl, a hot chick, you need some money. Love costs. So if you love your car and you want it to look, go fast and look good, it costs. It's the same thing. That's the question you got to ask yourself first. Now, me, I like the turbo. Like over here, I have my um, turbo stuff. I was ready to go ahead and do the turbo situation, right? Right here, got my wastegate. This ain't no bullcrap intercooler. I was ready. What was the setback for me not doing the turbo situation? Because I didn't know what engine I wanted to run. I didn't want to run the 4.6. I wanted to run the 5.4. After I started doing some research and start thinking about it, 5.4 in turbo form is cool. You'll get a lot more torque and a lot of, more, a lot of horsepower. But your rods are going to be the weakest point. Even though we showed you this one here has a forged crank, you're gonna need rods, and if you're changing the rods, you might as well get pistons. And if you're getting pistons, you might as well get a cam. If you're getting a cam, you might as well get APR studs. It keeps going and keeps going and keeps going. But now, in stock form, the 4.6 will basically outperform the 5.4 in reliability we speaking about. It'll be more ideal, it revs higher, um, the rods are a little bit more thicker, the same pistons are in both. Uh, the crankshaft's a little weak, but you know, you're only going to put around 350 horses anyway. At around 5 to 8 PSI. That's all you really need on the 4.6. But if you're going to turbo your 4.6, this show you a couple items that you're going to need. And you're going to need a turbo. Now, you're going to need a 76 millimeter turbo. All right? You're going to need oil feed lines, because if you're running an eBay turbo, it's just going to be oil feed. You don't really need to, you know, the coolant and all of that stuff is just too too much. And now you're going to figure out how to run your exhaust manifolds to your turbo. That's going to be a big, big issue. And then you're going to use that wastegate. And you're going to need an oil drain. Then also you're going to need a blow-off valve. Now you're going to have to figure out which, which, which you know, are you going to do the blow-through or are you going to do the suck. Now this is the suck type. You're going to use your um, math that goes right there on the turbo. Now, the blow-through type will be somewhere around here on the cold side to your inner core. This one here is guaranteed to start even if you have loose clamps and stuff like this. But when you're doing the blow-through, your system better be tight because it may not start so easily. This way is more ideal. I like to run it this way. It's just a lot better. All right, now you're going to need injectors. You can go ahead and get some 39-pound injectors, OEM ones. Now, here's a list of injectors right here that you can go and check. All right, you got your list there. You got your list. Good. Then you're going to need a fuel pump. All right, then you're going to need an SCT tune. You know what I mean? That's going to be like around $379. Dino tune is the best selected tune. I'm sorry to tell you guys. So, the difficulty for doing a, a turbo situation is... Kind of difficult for the backyard mechanic, really, to be honest with you. Tell me where will you put the turbo? You can put the turbo dead smack in the middle, because that's where I would put it. But now you have to have the pipe being routing all over the place. And the difficulty of routing the pipe for a regular backyard do-it-yourself is going to be hard. Because you're going to need elbows, 90 degrees, 45 degrees, all types of stuff. And you know that. But if you have all the tools that you need, pipes and all of this stuff, and you don't mind getting dirty and mind spending some time, or even taking out the engine because some cases you may have to flip the manifold to go backwards. Meaning that the manifold goes this way, you may have to take it out and flip it to go this way to support where to put the turbo in the front. If that's the case, then these studs are going to be changed because they're going to break, guaranteed. One of them, two of them, or three of them will break. So what's that's going to end up happening? I'm going to have to take out the engine. That is why you haven't seen a turbo on this car. I was about to, I was thinking about it, I, was, I knew what I was going to get myself into, and I opt out. And I said, you know what, I'm just going to run the engine NA and do some little tweaks to get it going. Because I end up buying this, so the turbo dreams for this went away. Because I know that I have to take this engine out. 
And if I got this engine out and I got a little bit of money, I might as well put the rods in the 5.4 and slap that inside here. So my head kept going. Kept going, kept going. That's why I don't want you guys to do. I want you guys to really be solid on what you want to build. I'm like, hey, if I'm doing this, I might as well do this. If I'm doing this, I might as well do this. You know, and then you have nothing. You end up doing absolutely nothing. So that's why I'm making these videos for you guys to really have a solid plan on what you want to do. It's the way it's going to work. And while that's going to be happening, you have to take the engine out and you might as well go ahead and plug your oil pan with the um, return feed line and all of that stuff. So scale to 1 to 10 to turbo your 4.6, 5.4 dreams, it's going to be difficult 10. No way around it. It's going to be difficult. But you have another way to do it. You can either supercharge it or procharge it. So, number two will be a procharger setup. Procharger setup will be ideal for most of you guys out there. And the reason why I say it's going to be ideal because the difficulty of installing procharger to your um, 4.6, very easy. The difficulty will be somewhere around 3 to 5. So, the best charger for your needs is going to be a P1SC. The reason why I chose the P1SC, because you can get it with a three coil intercooler at 8 PSI, three year warranty for $49 extra. Now you want more boost, you add smaller pulleys, you get more boost. But if you want high boost, which I don't think this engine can handle that much boost, you can go get you the D1SC. It's going to be hard to put inside this 4.6 due to the, um, the blower pulley positioning on that item because it's kind of it's huge. So, and it's going to be hard to get um, lower um, PSI out of that system because it's just designed for big boost. But um, other than that, man, the torque numbers are sweet. You know what I mean? The torque numbers are going to stay nice and high. The car is going to keep pulling, keep pulling, keep pulling. It's going to be beautiful. You know what I mean? With these um, pro chargers because it's like a hybrid between a turbocharger and a supercharger. But that is going to be your number one item that you can put in, to be honest with you. Um, versus a turbo or, or, or the supercharger. Now the supercharger, the Kenny Bell Special, that is a beautiful, beautiful item, but the price is like seven grand. It's ridiculous. And the numbers that you're going to get with that supercharger on your stock 4.62 valve is not going to be that great. So if you want to add a cam to it on both sides, fine. Now it's going to be around $8,000. $8,000 to get around 300 horsepower on your stock engine, those numbers don't jive. You can buy four Crown Victorias. In the big scheme of things, you have to dial everything in. This has to play with that. That has to play with this. Everything. Got to remember that. So, you know, your injectors got to play with your um, math. Your math got to play with it. Your, uh, the, the, the tune has to play with all of this and orchestrate it all together. In some cases, people slap these things in and it's good. In some cases, people slap this thing and things start to go. Like TPs start to go, and then MAVs start to go, because you're forcing air. If you're dealing with this, you got belt issues, you know, pulleys start to go. I mean, injectors, if you're using your stock ones or you're putting other ones in, maybe one injector is bad. You don't know. Maybe your intake plenum is starting to really, really leak. These things happen when you start to put power outers in it. It's going to hit to the weakest part of the car, and it's going to blow that. And that's just how that works. But if you're a semi-do-it-yourselfer, you can put the supercharger in or the pro charger in and send it all to a tuner and then he can just dial everything in for you. And that will probably be the best solution for you guys. So in the end, man, of all of this, man, your 4.6, you're going to be using the pro charger. That's what you're going to be using. Pro charger and then number two will be um, a turbo charger. And then number three will be when you go to the bank and get a loan will be a, a supercharger. But happy holidays to you and yours out there, man. I know this season, it's rough, man. It's rough out there, man. And you know you guys got to give your kids presents and all of this stuff, man. And, and your presence is, is my present, to be honest with you, man. Thank you guys for watching my videos. And thank you for subscribing. Thank you for clicking the like button. I really do appreciate all you guys. Even some of the guys are just stopping by just watching the video, man. I do appreciate it. And we're going to talk about Ford dropping their car line. Now, everybody done videos about this. So, 
I came up with solutions on what they should do and what they should not do. But that will be on the next video, man. And thank you for watching this episode of Build Something TV, man. I really do appreciate you guys for watching this and checking this out. See you guys on the flip side. And we'll talk more about turbos and superchargers down below if you like. All right? See ya. As a bonus, man, you guys best to check your compression before you even get this going down. If you got a sick behind motor or a sick trans, adding these power adders like a turbocharger, supercharger, or procharger, or even nitrous, power adders are going to attack the weakest part of your engine and expose them. And when you expose them, your engine will go completely or your transmission will go Pfft. That's what it's designed for and that's what's going to end up happening. Oh, the best ideal situation for you is to take it to a dyno tuner. Now the dyno tuner is going to tune this thing to perfection in real time versus a SCT tune which is an estimated tune from another motor. Each motor is different. Each turbo is different. Each supercharger is different. Each Pro Charger is different. It reacts differently in each motor. So when it reacts differently in each motor, it needs a said tune to suit said power adder. The numbers that I gave you are really rough draft estimates of numbers at 6 PSI. The turbo is going to be the ideal, cheapest route for you. But the difficulty of doing that and buying and all the stuff and equipment and stuff is going to make it really difficult. So the Pro Charger wins in this um, debate. Now, the Kenny Bell situation is a beautiful situation, but it doesn't win on price. 